Greetings, fellow Sturgeons. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, Episode 6, Investing in a Caravan. Problem is, there is a lot of diminishing returns, so I'm just not earning, because of these, like, large group fights, I'm not earning, um, as much money as I was originally. On well, Ira and Mysia. So, I might want to work my way west to show you, uh, different types of fights. Work my, working my way to Volandian territory, which would be the, the lances and sword fights, and maybe they're going to be worth a little bit more. Monchog... That's the leader that I downed. He would have information about the folly, but uh, that's not my priority right now. Oh, one other thing. Uh, One-handed, so you said movement speed. Done. Playing for a pylum. One-handed pull arm. Man, if that connected. I don't know why I keep trying to murder Hera first. Almost feel a little bad. <laughs> this is why I hate pole arms and spears. I'm so bad with them. And they're goofy to use point blank. I guess I could go into first person mode, but I feel like uh, if I did that, you guys would become nauseated pretty quickly. Even if it did make my fighting a little bit better. Right? Pretty, pretty nauseous inducing, I'd like to think. It's not so bad when you have uh, a bow and arrow and you're sieging a castle and you can just go first person and stand still. But in these fights here, it's like the most nausea inducing VR game ever. Because it, it, it's not stabilized, and you bounce that or up and down, and I don't know. Maybe you disagree with me, but it definitely make me hurl pretty quick. You! There we go. That had a bit of extra couch damage because I was moving fast enough. You'll see a little symbol over my spear in the bottom right when it's um, when it has like a bonus damage applied. Beat that poor dude in the next week. Hey! <laughs> well, you were easy. One hit wonder. Kind of feel bad. They bust. My guess is she she was a noble, and my guess is she was wounded from uh, the last fight she was in. So she was not at full health. It's not my fault that she entered the fight wounded, but uh, did make it very easy. Kind of like uh, Casca, right? From Berserk, when she entered the battle. Well, she wasn't wounded. It was a bit different. Adult themes. But, uh, yeah. Something similar. I don't really care where the next fight is. I just want to keep hitting west so I can build up enough cash and vary the types of tournament fights that I'm in to keep you all entertained. Because you guys want me to save up for a caravan, but caravans are pricey. Now, in terms of making money, uh, hiring yourself out as a mercenary can make you a good bit of cash because uh, you're paid by whatever lord or noble that hires you out, or basically the king that hires you out. And then if you're a vassal, uh, you can be awarded territory, which can be very helpful as well. Uh, pull arm skill. So what do we have here? We have cavalry, um, bonus damage while mounted. 
or the other one, hold on one second, is Pikeman. Uh, increased damage not mounted. Mounted or not mounted damage. It's it's up to you. So there you go. Choose between those two. None of my other companions have leveled up. I'm the only one that has been leveling up. But that's mostly because I've been entering to uh, tournament fights and they're just not participating. And if they're not participating, they're not gaining any skill. So as Pranish promised, I'm going to head towards uh, Batanian and Valandian towns to try to mix up the types of tournaments that I'm in. And perhaps I'll poll whether or not you think I should take on other types of work. Work for um, town leaders and the like. Because it can pay. Generally, it's more work and effort than just winning a tournament fight, which only takes like a few minutes. Um, and the pay can be pretty crud. But I'll leave it up to you anyway. Now, another way to make a lot of money is to sign up as a vassal. Oh, hi, Kaladog. So he's the leader of the... Um, and I'll ask him. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to ask him about the folly. And there we go. Some more folly information. Another big, uh, another way to make a lot of money is to sign up as a vassal and defeat an enemy lord. And sometimes the loot defeating an enemy army is quite a bit because, you know, you'll end up with uh, some of the gear that they were wearing. And unlike the basic uh, crummy looters that you're killing, enemy lords are going to have... You know, some pretty legit loot. So, Batania... Combat is two-handed axes. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. And bows. Oops. Friendly fire. Me versus Mingus. Where are you, Mingus? <laughs> there can only be one! And it's me. And then me versus Gaurin. With axes at high noon. Okay. A bone crusher. At least they sell for good. So I'm almost at 10k. I'm getting there. I am getting there. And you guys want bonus bonus mounted damage when I have pole arms. Got it. Sionion and Carbanset. Should I prioritize arenas or other quests? Basically, should I do it fast, but not a lot of variety, or should I do it slower, but a lot more variety? And I'm trying to I'm trying to give, do a little bit of variety here in, in the arena fights that I take. So now in Britannian territory, it's going to be a little bit different than it was before, and then so on and so forth. But it'll be up to you how I spend my last half hour. So here's Carbanseth. And we're almost at 10k. Ooh, that's a nice axe. Might be better than the one I have. <laughs> Shot my own friend in the back of the head. You're in my way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Big uh-ohs. 4v1. I have made some mistakes. Shoot my own friends in the back of the head when I have a bow and they have nothing. Yeah, it was a bad idea. And uh, I might have some regrets. So I'm going to leave town real quick. <laughs> At least it was only a loss of 150 gold. It's not much in the scheme of things. All right, one more minute to vote on this. It looks like it's going to be other quests here. So I will respect your wishes after the timer is out.
Alright, so I'll do one more arena fight, and I want to do a Valandian arena fight, so that you can see the Valandian arena fights prop into Jacqueline. Got it. So that's south of me. Because hopefully it'll be a Lance fight, and Lance's fight- Lance fights get real weird and sketchy. And can be hilarious. Well, I have crossbows, but some of them have lances. And we're going to be doing another quest from here on out. So crossbows reload slower, but they aim a bit easier because they snap and they don't have as much arrow drop. But I definitely prefer... Oh man, I'm so bad with them too. I definitely prefer bows over crossbows because of the... Uh, speed at which you can fire. This crossbow in particular is like really low damage, but that's not the fault of a crossbow. It's just these are arena tournament crossbows, which are garbage. You can also go first person for these, and it's not so bad. As long as you're standing still. Two v two v two v two. Oh, so here we go. No, these aren't actual lances. Doesn't stop me from lining up a big charge. Yeet! Oh. I want to hit, I want to break 200. I don't think I've ever hit anyone for more than 200 yet. So I want to do one of these, like, giant mass damage. But it requires them charging you and you charging them at the same time, which doesn't always happen. And it would be considerably more if I was also charging a relatively unarmored person rather than a heavily armored person, because if there's not armor, you don't do reduced damage. So that's most of these guys here in this fight have pretty decent armor, so it might not be possible to break 200. I'll try though. Last round. And it's with pull arms. Of course it is. <laughs> Cheers, Skyra. <laughs> I jumped over a swing and then just one tapped him. Bye now. Yeah, I couldn't deny you a hydrate. Even if it was in the middle of my fight. Alright, so that helmet's better than mine. And I'm going to save up for the caravan. So we're going to do some other quests here. Uh, gain these recruits is not something I want to do. I'd like to be nice, not evil. So let's check over at Frigian, or whatever they're called. You have a family feud. I will do that. So... One of your relatives fell victim to his temper and killed a man from Oriton. And you need to play, pay blood money. So, uh, don't worry, I will protect your relative. So we are going to head over to... Talk to Thavin in... To convince him to go to Oriton... So let's take a walk around and look for the guy that I have to talk to about this blood feud. There he is. Tandred. Okay. The raider and plunderer in me wants to kill some citizens, but I guess I'm not allowed. I can't think of very many games that allow you to kill children anyway. For probably good reason. Alright, Tandred.
Okay. Yep. I've agreed to go talk to them. So then, I pop over to Oridin. Which is... Where? You guys picked... Wait. I keep forgetting. Did you pick speed or damage? And here's Oridin. And I need to talk to whom? Fernhard. Fernhard, whatever. I think I have to go visit him, though. I can't just talk. Okay, so he's refused. Uh, and I don't think I'm just allowed to kill him in cold blood. Okay, just checking. Was mounted damage? Got it. So, I have agreed to talk. Uh, okay. Nope, I, this out of order. I think. No, I didn't. It's been a while since we've done a blood feud here. Keep meaning to hit visit, but I keep not visiting. Yeah, I need to talk to uh, the other guy in the other town, the original one, saying that he refused. Oh no, maybe I did it wrong. Hang on, but stop moving. Oh, I want to talk to your boy first? Wait, wait, wait a second. What? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't, um... I didn't do the right, uh, dialogue. So this is the one that wronged um, the person from the other town. All right, relax. I've talked to your relative. I know all about the situation. I'm here to help. Uh, yes, I will come to back you up. You can't hide in the shadows forever. So it's time to go face uh, the things you've done wrong. All right, there we go. Now Orden has this little uh, hot bookmark marker, or whatever it's called. And uh, he is traveling with me, Thavin. So, let's go visit. We have to talk. Come on, just listen to me, please. We want to face justice, and I'm saying he's under my protection. And then, um, I can either say, I'm not convinced, I will protect the accused until you see reason, so I'm gonna leave this up to you. The three choices here. Or I could say you're breaking the law for him just trying to murder the child. Or, the third choice, you are right, you're free to deliver over justice as you see fit, and they fight. So, here's one minute. You think I should protect him, say that he's breaking the law, or just back off. What would you do, Mr. Yoda? I startled him so bad. What would Mr. Yoda do? You would eat bananas and pee on blades of grass, wouldn't you? That's what you would do, dude. Yes, you're a good boy. All right, looks like uh, we're going to protect him. 
I like your all sense of justice. All right, dummy. God, he has a lot of hit points. There we go. And he thanks me. You're welcome. And then we bounce out of here. Costana, thank you for the sub. You're welcome. So, Fernard here does not like me much. The influential landowner that he is. But, uh, the guys back in the town that I picked up the fight uh, will appreciate the fact that I backed them up. Let's go see that. I'm only heading over here to see that Tangred here has a relation of 11. And everyone in this town has a, a relation of extra one, so you can see how many additional people that I can recruit as a result. Alright, let's keep trying to find other honest work. If we can, I'm going to head east to Batanian territory. See if we can't get hired out by nobles or whatever. I'm not going to sign as a mercenary or a vassal just yet. You guys did vote that down. But any other work is fine by me as long as it's honest work and not working for gang leaders. So you need draft animals. You will pay 740 for four healthy Sumter horses. All right, I'll do it. Sumter horses, let's go up to Penkanak, which is just up the way. And I only need four of them. I think I already have in my... No, I only have mules. And Penkanak only has mules. Uh, they have three Sumter horses. Three of four. So one more. Okay, I think we have to go over to Marinath. All the towns around me sell, like, wood or pigs, not sumter horses. Sometimes you can get them cheap off of villagers, but I'm not going to go through the villager dialogue to see if any of them have good sales. No sumters here. Well, that's a problem. Let's try Dunglenis and Mike Who. Thanks for gifting out subs to the community. Cheers to you, dude. I appreciate it. May all the cold coffee flow in your name. How do you not have Sumters either? You guys are killing me. All right, Carbants. Come on now. Fingers crossed. I can see why this was an annoying task. There we go. There's one. Doesn't my guys ride one? Uh, they do. I think, uh, what's his name? The the dude that's naked rides a Sumter horse. Upo. No, he is a desert horse. Uh, Sifion, or Siafon had a Sumter. But I, I have them now. We're good. <laughs> Prindor has maybe a task for us as well. So we'll check there in a second. Okay. A little bit extra money. This is, a uh, might add, like a really terrible way to actually build money. But you guys voted on it. I'm fine with it. So you need tools. All right. You need two tools and you give me grapes for them. So 145 gold worth of tools. And let's talk to Prindor. If I can reach him in time. Prindor, what do you need? Uh, he doesn't want anything for me because I'm not of his clan. He doesn't have any tasks for outsiders. Uh, these grapes are best sold. Rovalt, Rote, none of those are close. Carbanth, 
is probably the best closest, so I'll head out that way. Ah, uh, you've been binging on Gaia Fire? Gaia and Fire? It lost by 5% this week. Maybe it can win next week. Fingers crossed for you. I really enjoyed that series, but it is a bit dead in the water until it gets the votes. So, yeah, I made a net profit. Not much, but technically, yes. All right, more honest work. You have a task for me. Need helps with brigands. Hey, that's something I could do. I will hunt down two bands of brigands for you. So, 550 gold once I've dealt with them. I don't have any tracking skills, so I actually don't know where they are. Which makes this a little bit harder. What do you need down here? That's not what I meant to click on. Your companion for Guy and Fire? Me too. And you have troublemakers. Okay. So this is interesting. I just agreed to train one guy's troops, which is five borrowed troops. And I also agreed to kill some brigands. So hopefully these borrowed troops will level up to the brigands. And this is another dude that had information about the folly. So get that real quick. Oh yeah, there, there's the looters. All right, let's hope these stupid little borrowed troops survive this fight, because if they don't, uh, I can't really return them for quest completion. But I'm not going to go out of my way to keep them alive. I'm not a babysitter. I'm a leader of men. Come on, borrowed troop, you can do it. trying to keep them as, as protected as I can by tanking for them, but, you know, they're low level, they have, like, farming influence, and they suck, so I can only do so much. The enemies are fleeing, but, you know, whatever. I have no respect for that. Let's see if I can get him. Almost. Yeah, guess it got away. So, none of the borrowed troops... Did really none of them level up? Oh, they all leveled up. Hey, look at that. I did my job. And I'm going to hold on to those troops. Because I'm going to bring them back my... Uh-oh. Whoops, shouldn't have done that. I should have sent them back. So I failed that. Uh, and I still have looters to kill because I let them get away. So I'm going to send my troops in to automatically kill the looters because we had them overwhelmingly. And then there should be one more group to do that. And I got to watch myself as to not fail quests like an idiot because I don't want to become a criminal in these lands. At least not on accident. All right, I'm lazy, and I'm going to send my troops in to do my the work for me. Because they're borrowed troops that I shouldn't have anyway. And then that one is completed. I have helped them out. So let's go ransom the... Uh, ransom the prisoners. These looters. Okay, looking for more honest work. We're up to 11k. We're getting close to caravan, but not quite there. Someone else in my group can level up. So, see ya, fun. See ya, fun skill. Uh, we have riding. So she can choose between 
charge damage or maneuvering. And have you guys pick on that. There is some work in Dunglenis to be had. Mmm, a gang. No, let's not. Inferno, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Train troops for him. All right, we'll do this one correctly. Hopefully. So in order to train troops, I just need to get them into a fight where they're not going to get squished. Oh, and I'll train troops for you as well. Which apparently is impossible. Cool. Uh, what you need in and out? No, I'm not doing that right now. Someone over here knew something about the folly, Melodier. So let's go talk to Melodier while I look for... Oh, man, that's a lot of looters. While well, I look for a an appropriate sized group of looters that I can train my troops off of. So I've got five borrowed troops. I also want to get rid of the Batanian Highborn youth. I don't need them, so... Um, dismissed. I don't want to pay them, and... Yeah, that works out. So a small group of looters. This area looks very well patrolled. One of the things that ends up happening to talk about like high level game mechanics is uh, when an empire is at war, a lot of the vassals of that empire go to the battlefields, which means that the lands that they control fall victim to looters and bandits and the like. And then when the empire is not at war, they're very well patrolled. So in my case, I'm guessing the Batanians aren't currently at a war or they just don't have a lot of men deployed in said war. Everyone, soldier, charge! So as a result, uh, the bandits back home are killed. They're very well taken care of. And that means that there isn't much for me to hunt as a, uh, as a troop trainer. Good luck, borrowed troop. Don't die. They're gonna die. Survive. Ooh, ooh, we're good, we're good. And two of five leveled up. Not bad. All right, so you guys want CFN to get maneuvering. And I leveled up in writing as well, so I'll take a look at that. So I leveled up, so that gives me a free focus point. I'll have you pick on that. And then looking at the riding, it's going to be filled to the brim, which is increasing carry capacity and better deal buying and selling mounts, or inf uh, mounted infantry increased my party speed by 30%, and melee cavalry information has a bonus speed. So either carry a lot or move a lot to oversimplify things. As far as my skills go, one-handed skill, I still have a bit of wiggle room. Two-handed, I've been neglecting, but I don't have the weapon. Bow, I'm kind of close to cap. Riding, I'm very close to cap. Athletics, I've got some wiggle room. And then if I wanted stewardship, lots, tactics, lots, scouting, lots, leadership, uh, a little bit. Just to show you where I'm at with all those skills. Informed decisions and all. You need tools. Okay. No, 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 don't wait there. All right, I'm still looking for bandits to level up these uh, lobies, but I might as well grab some tools while I'm at it. Those are really low-priced tools, too. 
there was uh, like 117 tools at Sianion, which meant that I did not spend very much gold buying them. Oh, that's a group of looters that I probably should chase down. Cool, and they gave me four silver for those tools. And a little bit of relation, of course. All right, you looters. Hey, you're perfect. I can train my troops off of that, no problem. Well, hideout, too. All right, so here up, you can see that the two groups of looters combined. So I'm not fighting eight or 17, but both 25. So I'm gonna need to do a oh. little bit of Calling of the herd of, of um, looters before I send my lobies in so that they don't die. I am Sturgeon, but that's in the about command. Unless you mean like in real life. And in real life, I'm a little Sturgeon too. But barely at all. More Welsh. Which would make me like Batanian, maybe. So I have my troops back there while I thin out the crowd and split them up, just hanging out. <coughs> Actually, it's in the uh, title too, isn't it? Cavalry attack! Horse charge! So I'm charging in with my companions to try to split up the groups even further before I send my barred troops in. Because I don't think the Vara troops are going to survive against 24 looters or 23 looters or whatever it is now. Alright, now I'm going to tell my infantry to charge because they're not one big group of looters. Well, there is, but I'm whittling them down. And that should make it a little bit easier for my Vara troop to not die. You know what? Can you stop throwing rocks at me? Oh, I think one of my bar troops just died. Yep, and yet another one just died. This group was a bit too big. Live and learn, for me. For them, die and suffer. My, uh, inappropriate battle target. <laughs> Really cool. Oh, they're running. Okay. Let's see here. Bar troop, all but one died. <laughs> I may have made a mistake. Uh. Yeah. Send the troops back. Oh, I received money for that. Cool. All right, you guys want me to spend some on Vigor. I'll stick some in my... Uh, no, you're not two-handed. Equal them out. All right, for my riding skill... I'm just about out of time, but for my riding skill... um. Riding skill, carry, weight, or speed. I'll go a little bit longer. Let's uh, let's hit a hideout for the funsies. I sent one veteran back. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring. Only my five companions, even though I can have up to ten. Who needs extras, right? I've got a big old bow that I can slice these guys up with. All right, this first tent looks empty. Actually, all these tents look empty. What the heck? From downtown. 
Oh, right at their feet. Oh, there we go. Kobe! I have a lot of arrows, so I can miss a lot. Doesn't much matter. In the gut. In the leg. In the head. Shoulder. Almost head, shoulders, knees, and toes so far. No, don't throw stuff at me. I don't like that. Here, you. Th come on, try to throw. Try to throw. Lower that shield. Any day now. Fine. What? Get out of here with your nonsense. Alright, telling my companions to follow me while I clear out a bandit camp somewhat single-handedly. Are they following me? Oh yeah, they yeah, they're just a ways back. You really want me to get carry weight as a riding skill? Rather than like, okay, sure. Whatever you want. This is my skill, not CFA's. Oh, headshot! Double headshot! Alright, can I make this? Super Kobe! Oh, way high. Nope. Oh, wow! I didn't even expect to hit him that one. Headshot! Okay. Ha! <laughs> Speed one out. I put my thumb on the scale. Nice. Yeah, the difference is, like, for carry weight, you can always just buy more draft animals. Like, if you need more carry weight, just buy more mules. But speed? You can't just buy faster horses. Horses have a max speed, so... Oh, in the neck. So at some point, it's, like, more beneficial... To Yo, there's diminishing returns for carry weight is, I guess, how to put it. In the head. In the head again. Yeet! Oh, Come on. Eighty-five meter shot. That's what I get for uninformed voting? True! Just, when I see it go way off the rails, I'll maybe help to remedy it. Is that done? No, not yet. Guess there's still more. I don't know if this is still a bug or a feature or whatever, but it used to be that when you entered the final fight, you entered with whatever weapon you are currently holding. So if you clear the bandit camp with a bow, you enter the duel with the bandit lord with a bow, which is super sketchy, because then you have to very rapidly switch weapons, which can suck, because you get annihilated pretty early and pretty quickly if you don't have the right weapon out. So that's why I'm switching weapons quickly to make sure that I don't enter the final battle. Uh, so either I can duel them... Or we can just fight. I'm going to duel. Because it's five versus, like, ten. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, boys, but you're my prisoners now. I like how they just stand there and they're all like, Oh, I guess we lost. Yes, you did. Well, then I ended up with a ton of bow skill as a result, and my companions were just my backup dancers. I take a whole bunch of prisoners, and they're loot. Nearby notables are happy. Nearby notables would be like village leaders and uh, the vassals that own the castles and towns around. And they're happy because I just cleared out a den of bandits for no pay, in fact, just for the funsies. And let me just wrap this up by getting the speed. So that's mounted infantry increases my party speed by 30% and melee cavalry gives formation 10% bonus. And then also I have a bow skill that I'll let you all decide on. Two. 
So this is um, quick adjustments. Decrease my bow accuracy loss by rotating by 50%. So that's accuracy loss when you're rotating like this. And then troops gain 5% accuracy. Or uh, rapid fire. Increase my bow reload speed by 25%. And the troops are increased by um, uh, uh, speed by 5%. So that would be uh, reduce... Accuracy loss by rotate or rapid fire. Give you two and a half minutes on that while I wrap this up. Let's go ahead and sell all that junk I got off of those bandits. 1500, not bad. That means, that means I can start a caravan finally, which was. The big goal that you assigned me here. So let me kick off my caravan with CFA. Oh, also I have the prisoners to sell. You're right. I forgot about that. I wish you could have a horse walking around in town. Because it is really slow. Uh, maybe the tanner is the closest. So I'll start a caravan over at the tanner. You're also allowed, or not allowed, but you're also able to buy businesses like the tannery as well. You can buy shops and then have them pay you dues. So I could try to buy the tannery for 1400 or start a caravan for 1500 I accept. I'm going to make CFO the spice vendor my caravan leader. And it has been created. And what a caravan does is it... Um, it travels from town to town, buying and selling goods for an income. It's automated. The caravan can be raided, and the caravan leader sometimes can be captured, so it's not foolproof. And the more war and chaos there is in the, in, in the countryside, the worse the caravans will perform, because there is a lot of bandits around, and it's dangerous to caravan. Uh, but if we take a look at the um, the party wages here, uh, it is expected that uh, Siafan makes 500 dinars. So it's kind of a way to automatically fund armies and the like. Same with buying shops and the like. So that's pretty cool. Are the towns procedurally generated? They are not. Well, they're partially procedurally generated. Some, some of the towns layout and stuff is hard-coded. But then, like, the, the shops and the... And, the sort of prosperity and the thing, the the things that you can buy and trade and sell are randomized. Uh, speaking of which, let's sell the silver that I got and go with rapid fire. And then see if there's, yep, there's nothing left to do. So we should in a second here see CFA's caravan somewhere. Another thing that you can do to the caravan is if I find it in real time. Uh, last seen at Epictria. So she maybe not have left yet. I don't know where she is. But you can also donate um, You can also donate troops to the caravan to make it tougher. But this is what the caravans look like. So this is a Sturgeon caravan coming down to Epictria. And there's also the, um, the prisoners to be ransomed. Don't worry, I didn't forget. So there, done. Um, let me see if I can't find the the caravan that should be one around now. Maybe it just hasn't left. Or maybe it, it whipped past me or something. I don't I don't know. Oh yeah, there it is. Here is the Spice Vendor's caravan. So it is traveling to Sianion with whatever goods is on it which is just over here. So it's not a, it's a, it's a real rendered caravan that can get attacked and, and caravans are particularly hard to run when you belong to a faction. So let's say I become a vassal of like Sturgia. My caravan could be raided by any enemy of Sturgia. So if Sturgia goes to war with Batania or the empire or something like that, they will also attack my caravan, which means that caravans are probably best used when you're not a vassal or not a, a lord or a king or whatever, because once you are a lord or a king, there's a lot more enemies. But because I'm just, uh, you know, a 
I don't belong to any company or any king. Only bandits attack my caravans, and bandits are a lot easier to, to defend against than massive armies of uh, enemy lords. Um, but also, we can talk business, and they haven't found any profitable, profitable trades yet, so on and so forth. And the the wealth and of the caravan is heavily dependent on the trade skill of the companion that is leading it. So she has a trade of 102, which is pretty awesome. So hopefully she will make us good money. I hope. And we, we you can see that my um, my expected wages from her caravan is about positive 311. Um, so now that I have 311 stuck in my head. But uh, positive 311, so it, it pays for itself over time. It did cost me 15,000 up front, but it's pretty handy. Provided it, it does not get raided and stop. Because there is a chance that it gets raided and stops, and it does not pay the 15000 back. It's a gamble. And that, my friends, is all the time I have. I went over a little overtime, but I did get that caravan, which is pretty cool. Thank you for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, which originally streamed live on Twitch May 19th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Sturgeons.